Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA Stingray 120 build. In this video, I'm going to be constructing this upper kind of forward portion of the fuselage as you can see in this picture right here. And it's actually a pretty interesting step. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct, you'll notice from the picture, hopefully you can see that's kind of a dark picture, that this piece is constructed as a solid piece extending from the fuselage up and over the wing itself. And it all gets glued in place on both the fuselage and the wing. And then we come back and we cut it in half right along a seam that we create when we put this together. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a few seconds here. But yeah, so it's really kind of an interesting step, I think. So let me show you the plans and the parts. So here are the plans. And if you remember from the last video in this series, I mounted the wing onto the fuselage and we worked on the um, bolts back here, the wing bolts and the block. We threaded that. And then I had this dowel and I installed this F3 former, which looks like this right here, F3. And as you recall, if you saw that video, I actually have, there's two F3s, there's another one here. So let me, I'll get to that in just a second. But here is the, the upper fuselage that we're gonna construct today. And the thing is, it's constructed, as I mentioned, is one piece and it's glued down. We're gonna mount the wing and then it's glued down to the top of the fuselage and on top of the wing itself. And then we come back and we're gonna cut it right along this seam right here using um, a saw. And this can, then this piece is gonna detach, obviously, from this piece here. And so again, it's an interesting um, uh, design because the wing incorporates this upper portion of the fuselage. All right, so let me show you the parts and discuss further how this is gonna be constructed. So to start with, I have another F3. You may recall from the last video in this that I mentioned that there are two F3s and this one obviously is not here because it's right here. We mounted that like I just mentioned. And you'll notice here on the plans, there's another F3 right here. And again, that's, so that's where the seam's gonna be. It's gonna be right in between those two formers and this one's gonna go with the wing. And then there's these side pieces that are one length and here it is, I have to take it out of the wood. This one actually, popped out already. So this one's gonna go right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this former on F3, and then we have an F4 former, which is this guy right here, which gets mounted right up in here. And then these guys, we're gonna put the sides on with these two pieces. And then there's a plank, quarter inch plank, that's gonna go right on top here like that. Pretty simple, you know, construction. And then as I mentioned, we'll come back and we'll cut it. You'll note that this structure only extends to the firewall and then there's nothing past the firewall because it's open to make room for your engine. Well, if you invert the engine, you can do this option where you can close it off using a, a balsa block. And that's what I'm gonna do. So today I went out to my local hobby shop and also an arts and crafts store to see if I could find a piece of balsa wood that would have been big enough for this. It actually has to be a pretty big size piece of wood. So here it is, this is the opening we need to cover. This is a little over four inches wide and it's a little over inch tall and then it's a little less than six inches long. And nobody had a piece of wood that size. And I thought, well, maybe I could just order one online. But then I was thinking, well, if I do that, then I have to pay for shipping and maybe there's an another option. So what I decided to do is actually buy a couple planks of thinner balsa wood and decided that what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll build it up. All right, and then to start with, I'm gonna put some cellophane or some clear wrap right along here and plug the wing into it. And that way when I'm gluing this down, I won't glue this F3 to this F3. And then we're also gonna use a little bit, put a little bit of a gap between these two formers. It's not shown on the plans, but it says it in the instructions. Just put a little bit of gap between the two of them so that I can cut between it with a saw.
So for this step, one thing you'll see is that this former, even though it's the same size as this one, it sticks up higher because it's sitting on top of the, the wing right here. So the bottom has to be trimmed down and shaped a little bit, probably put a little bit of an angle on it so that it becomes flush with the top of this F3. So both of them have to be flush. So I have to cut off, looks like about a quarter inch or so is gonna have to be trimmed. So I'll do that carefully. And then the other thing I have to do is it has to sit not up against it flush, it has to be back a little ways. And they say 132 in the instructions. And I spent a little bit of time looking at some things to try to put a spacer in there. And it turns out that these two rulers that I have, if I stick them together, I put this one down here and this other one here, I get about 1 32nd of an inch. So that's kind of where I'll, I'll use these to help me set it up. So all you, all you need us to do is find something that's skinny that you can kind of put in there to give you that gap. And then this will get glued on and then it'll have a gap built into it. And then as I mentioned before, we'll come back and it'll be cut along that, between that, in that gap, divide the two halves. So it may be a little bit hard to see this, but I've been, I curled up a, rolled up a piece of sandpaper, as you can see here, like a little tube. And I've been just trying to just eyeball it and put a curve in this edge right here. You can kind of see that if I move it around. So that matches, hopefully, gets, you know, it's not perfect. So that'll sort of match the, the wing, the curvature of the wing right there. So when I put this in like this, and again, these are my spacers here. And that way it'll have just a little bit nicer fit. All right, so it's just gonna go in here like this. See if I can get it kind of lined up. And hopefully you kind of see down inside, down inside there, how I kind of got that curve going. So this now looks like it's pretty pretty close, so I'll go ahead and I'll glue it on with some thick CA. All right, well, that came out okay. So the next step is to put on these little side pieces. And one's gonna go here, like that. And then this other one goes here. And I decided once I'm gonna glue these on first and then come back and put on 
this last former back here. Because what I want to do is I'm going to draw a line along my center here so that I can just make sure that these guys don't get out of, out of alignment. So I want to put a center line down here and then just measure off of that. Now the other thing I want to point out is of course these pieces are, you know, they're square. They're just basically cut like they're cut like this. And because of the angle that we have, I'm going to trim a little bit. So I'm going to trim an angle onto the bottom here and also along this bottom over here, just on the, just kind of knock off that, that edge so that I can get it more flush up against the wing and the fuselage up here. And then kind of it's going to be similar up on top because this is an angle. I'm going to trim this down so that it's flat all the way across. And then when we come back and put the plank on top, it'll sit down nice and flush.
Okay, well these sides are now finished. I just have to sand them um, as, I, as I continue on with this. And then of course there's a little bit of gap filler I put on both sides of this to fill in. I had a few little gaps here and there. And then of course this is this seam that I've talked about before where I'm gonna be cutting in between these two formers to separate the wing portion from the fuselage portion. Now the instructions say to go ahead and put the plank down on top. Of course mark it and put the plank down on top and then come back and cut it. But I thought, you know, it's, that's, nothing's going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and make these cuts now, or at least the majority of the cut now on the sides, come back and plank it. At least I'll have those, you know, clearly marked where I need to cut. So I thought that could be an easier step. So let me go ahead and do this. I'll, I'll cut this open and then we'll go ahead and put the plank on top and we'll keep moving. All right, while this is curing, I can go ahead and start cutting the planks to fit in this nose area up on top here. So it's gonna cut up, I'm gonna cut a few blocks like this, couple pieces, and then once this all cures, I'll take these off obviously and I'll trim this and this upper plank and then I'll set these pieces on and then shape the entire thing together.
Now I got this from Harbor Freight. This is a Chicago brand and you know it's okay. Um, they've had a little bit of trouble with this with this thicker wood. Um, it seems like the motor's not very strong. So for hobby stuff, I think it's kind of cool. I do use it from time to time if you've, as, if you've noticed from a few of the videos recently. But um, yeah, anyhow, it's not the, uh, not the greatest, but kind of does the trick for some of this hobby stuff. Well, since this is going to be closed off, I thought what I would do now is just mark the center line or the thrust line of the engine. According to the plans, it's 7 16 of an inch below the top of this edge right here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark it with my square carefully. And I'll mark it in a few spots. So I'll just go around the inside of this engine compartment and mark it all out. And this way, when this is closed off, when I go to mount the engine, it'll be easier because it's going to be up there pretty high. And I just don't think it'd be kind of hard to get in there and, and do this after this is on. Thank you. 
Well, that was quite an adventure. As you saw, it was, took me quite some time to get this shaped. The problem that I ran into was I was cutting across the grain on most of this, which made it difficult. Plus it's sort of a larger surface to be trying to carve flat like this. So I tried a variety of tools. I tried, well, I used the saw to get rid of the big stuff, kind of make the first cuts. I used my smaller, oop, there goes one. I used my smaller, finer saw to kind of finish up some of those cuts. Um, I used this coping saw. And then I tried to use in the X-Acto as you saw, but that was a little bit difficult because it's hard to get like a straight edge on it. But I, you know, I pulled this thing out. This is just a cheap sort of like throwaway type of, um, and you know, you can buy replacement blades for it. But this has all those little um, tips that you can break off to keep it nice and sharp, this little tool. And the nice thing about it is I've used this before is it's you can actually get a really long blade and a really sharp blade. And I was able to just kind of shave this as you saw and then sanded it. So anyhow, I think it's close now. And I put this protective, uh, masking tape around it to help protect the neighboring areas. I'll pull this off and I'll take a look and we'll just go ahead and sand sort of the rest to kind of, kind of get it rough in. I think it's pretty close. And then I can go ahead and make this cut and we'll be finished up with this step. All right, well, hopefully everything worked out okay and I didn't glue my wing to the fuselage. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to sever this now. Like I said before, I made these initial cuts and that's really helpful because that tells me where I gotta go. So let me go ahead and trace these lines up across the top here and I'll take my razor saw and see if I can separate the two. And then what I'll do, since I already have the cut, I'll just go ahead and use those to get me lined up. And we'll see how I did. I have to cut this last little bit by the wing. Got to be careful. It's a little bit thicker saw, so let me go ahead and open this up a little more. Don't want to hit my wing. Okay, seems to work. Let me pop this side over here.
All right, well, it looks like this is what we call the moment of truth. So let's go ahead and pull this up. And there we go. All right, well, I will admit this came out better than I expected it to. I thought for sure I was going to cut this thing apart and then have it screwed up somehow, but I guess I got a little bit lucky. But um, yeah, looks looks came out pretty good. So I'm really happy about that, and I guess that goes to show, you know, follow the instructions and should end up with a good product. That's it for this sort of nose section and this upper fuselage wing thing that I just did. You know, thanks for hanging out with me. This was a pretty long video. I realize that. So if you hung out for this long, then, um, you know, kudos to you. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that um, the engine is going to be inverted, but I am going to have to hollow out sort of the inside of this to make room for the engine and the engine mount um, because the engine actually is going to extend a little bit into this area here. And I don't know, I may have to make sort of like an entrance hole or some kind of access hole on top of here to get to the carburetor area of the engine. But I'll see how that goes um, in the future. But overall, I think it's okay. And again, you know, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time sanding and shaping and make, every, make sure everything's good to go on this. But yeah, I'm really happy how this, how this came out. So again, thanks for watching my channel. I really, really appreciate it. And we will see you next time.